Okay, the objectives in this video is to explain equilibrium three-dimensionally and two-dimensionally, um, show you a bit of free body diagrams, and finally explain to you equilibrium plus a free body, um, sorry, present to you an equilibrium and free body diagram example. So initially, the following is a three-dimensional XYZ Cartesian coordinate system. So as you can see, we have the x-axis over here, we've got the y-axis over here and the z-axis over here. So, um, in equilibrium, the main forces we deal in are moments and forces. So as you can see, the x-axis has a moment about the x-axis and the force about the x-axis over here. The y-axis has a force about the y-axis and a moment about the y-axis over here, as you can see. And finally, the z-axis has a force about the z-axis and a moment about the z-axis. Okay? So, in this course, the notation is positive moments are anti-clockwise, negative moments are clockwise. So if you see a twisting force that is anti-clockwise or, or a moment force which is anti-clockwise, it's taken as a positive, but if you see a moment force which is clockwise, you take it as a negative. Okay? To do force equilibrium, the following is done. We can do the sum of forces in the horizontal direction is equal to zero, or the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero, or the sum of forces in the z direction is also equal to zero. To do moment equilibrium, we do the sum of moments about the x-axis, sorry, we do the sum of moments about x is equal to zero, the sum of moments about y is equal to zero, and the sum of moments about z is equal to zero. So that's how we f uh, solve equilibrium, through adding um, forces together or applying moments together and using lever arms and whatnot. Okay? So, we have different type of structures. Initially, we have something known as a statically determinant structure. Now, what is a statically determinant structure? Where the number of unknowns in a structure is equal to the number of knowns and is solvable by equilibrium. So, if a structural element is solvable by equilibrium, it's statically determinant. But in reality, in most civil engineering structures these days, they're mostly statically indeterminate and you cannot solve them by equilibrium. There are other methods to solve these, but these are beyond the scope of the subject and will be taught to you later in your degree. So just know for now that a statically determinant structure is one that can be solved through the use of equilibrium. Okay? So in this course, we won't be dealing with um, complex three-dimensional shapes. We'll be dealing with simpler two-dimensional shapes. Okay? So a two-dimensional Cartesian equation, uh, sorry, coordinate system looks as the following. So we have the x and the y axis, okay? So we have, in about the x axis, we have a horizontal force x over here. And about the y axis, we have a horizontal, uh, we have a vertical force y over here, okay? And since we're in the x, y phase, this means it's the z plane, we have a moment about z, okay? So what can be done in, as equilibrium over here? We can do sum of forces in the horizontal to equal to zero. We can do sum of forces vertically, f, y, to equal to zero or we can do the moments about z to equal to zero. So as you can see, 2D is much less complex than three-dimensional shapes, okay? So, free body diagrams are extremely important. Why? Why are they important in engineering? Firstly, they help you identify, visualize external forces acting on a structure, okay? So, without um, drawing your free body diagrams, you can't see how loads are transferred down, okay? So it's very important to understand how to identify forces, possible um, combination of forces that a following element is undergoing, depends on the situation, right? So as I said, helps identify, visualize external forces acting on a structure. Secondly, which I already mentioned as well, is to help you identify load paths. Thirdly, it allows for the calculation of forces using equilibrium. Um, the assumption is, as we said, the structure has to be statically determinant over here. So the assumption is the fact that the structure has to be statically determinant, and that is it is solvable by um, equilibrium. Okay? So let me do a quick example, nice and simple. So imagine we have the following flagpole. Now ignore everything in black, okay? Just ignoring everything in black. These are so just remember everything in blue, okay? So we have a following flagpole. That's a fixed support at the bottom here. The height of the flagpole is L. There's a force, um, P, which is, a, which, is, which is at an angle theta to the horizontal up here, okay? 
and we need to work out the reaction forces at the bottom. Now since this is a fixed support at the bottom we draw reaction forces as I showed you previously in the video that a fixed support has a vertical restraint, a horizontal restraint and a moment restraint. Okay, So the bottom here we call this point A so we have a vertical about A, a horizontal about A and a moment about A. Okay, The height of this flagpole is L and it's subjected to a force P which is at an angle theta to the horizontal. So you know we can, since this is at an angle theta, we can split the following force P into two elements. Firstly, we can split it into a horizontal force, P cos theta. And secondly, we can split it into a vertical force, P sin theta. Now we can apply equilibrium about the horizontal and vertical to work out the following reaction forces at the bottom here, over here. So first we do the sum of forces about the horizontal to equal zero. So we have HA, right, plus P cos theta, and this has to equal zero since it's equilibrium. So re, um, just uh, solving for HA, we find that HA is equal to minus P cos theta. So why did I choose these two? Because this one over here and HA are both horizontal, and we did sum of forces about the horizontal X to equal zero. Secondly, we have sum of forces about the vertical, Fy to equal zero. Okay, so we have the first force at the bottom here, Va. This one over here, and secondly, we have a force P sine theta up here, right? So since these two are vertical, we can apply equilibrium to work out our force Va, right? So we have Va, which is positive since we assume it to point up, plus P sine theta equals zero. So we find that Va is equal to minus P sine theta. Okay, next we have to work out our moment. So we can take moments about point A, which is at the bottom here, to equal zero. H A and V A will be out of the equation since um, they have no lever arm about point A. They're in line of sight with this point. So H A and V A contribute to no moment about A. And at the top here, also P sine theta is in the line of sight um, to point A, so there's no lever arm. Now remember, a moment is equal to force times the perpendicular distance. As you can see, P sine theta has no perpendicular distance towards point A, and neither does HA or VA. However, P cos theta has a perpendicular distance L, as you can see. Okay, so we can do the sum of moments about A. So we have MA, which is the unknown moment at the bottom here, minus P cos theta. So why is this a minus? If we fix the following support, and we rotate in the direction of this force, Look how the paper rotates, like this. Now this direction is clockwise. And we said that clockwise moments are negative. So therefore, we ha that's just our sign convention that we have to follow. So we have minus P cos theta, since it causes a clockwise moment. We multiply by the perpendicular distance of P cos theta towards point A, which is L. So times L equals to zero. And solving for this, we find that MA equals P cos theta times L. So this is how we work out. Uh, we worked out the reaction forces for the following flagpole using equilibrium. That's all for the following video. Thank you for listening.